please God. I'm so sorry for that. The presence behind me. I have to run. Run out. Run, but I can't move. God, please. I can't move. God, please. <laughs> The beast is... is gone. What? A tall man, robed in alabaster. So out of place here. Alan, please come with me. Who, who, who are you? Are you with me? Yes. I am. Who are you? My name is not to be revealed in this setting. You're an... you're an angel. I am honored to serve the sun who rules from the White Throne. That place back there... why did I have to go there? You were waiting. Waiting? Waiting for what? This... this is beautiful. It's more incredible than I, I had imagined. And yet, somehow, it's... it's terrifying. You are about to enter the Great Hall of the White Throne of Judgment. The Son who sits on the throne has beheld your heart. He knows your innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing is hidden. You will approach when your name is called. At the gold rail you will kneel, where you will have a chance to address the Son of the Most High, the King of the Universe. Wait, you're, you're saying then that this will decide whether heaven or... As it is written, this is the most decisive and solitary moment you will ever face. Did you not read in the eternal scriptures of the King's Judgment Seat? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. May your name be found. Oh. Oh. It's so... vast. The ceiling... must be a thousand... No. Five thousand feet high. It's also it's also magnificent. It's so permeated with God's love. And yet somehow I feel a holy a holy sacred fear. Come. All the things I worried about. How are we ever going to pay this off, Jeff? When are you going to shave that thing off your face? The board says they're going to evaluate my performance over the last two years. Terry, do you see a gray hair? Yeah, right there. Greg, I'm going to have to declare your room a national disaster area. Yeah. I think these pants must have shrunk in the wash. Oh, distractions. Foolishness. This is the moment I should have cared about. This is the moment that should have consumed me all my life. This is the moment I should have prepared for. My encounter with... Him. Prepare yourself. Hal Newman. It is now time to give an accounting of your time on Earth. You'll be all right, my friend. You're one of the godliest men in my church. If you aren't accepted, then all my work has been for nothing. I have... Uh, I served you, Lord. 
My whole life has been about serving your name. It's... Uh, it's been an honor, my lord. Gabriel. Is the name Hal Newman found in the Book of Life? Oh, what a blessing to be here to witness this. To see the reward no, of good... it is not, my lord. What? Hal Newman, you are guilty of denying me. What? You will be taken to the Lake of Fire, where you will spend eternity away from my presence no, no, in the company of Satan and his demons, no. and all those who have denied me. But Lord, how have I denied you? I accepted you as a boy. I've been a Christian my whole life. How can this be? Why? Gabriel. Reveal the works of his life. Yes, my lord. Here's what you do. Give this envelope to my good buddy down at the Planning Commission. Uh, he'll turn his head the other way. Just long enough for us to get the go-ahead to break ground on the project. It's that easy. Wait. I can get the siding for that low? Sure. <laughs> I understand. Only good for five or six years. Yeah, well, hey, I'll be retired by then. Stan Lee, relax, my friend. I've got several places we can hide the money, all right? Didn't you know I'm a CPA? <laughs> yeah, a creative person with accounting. <laughs> Dear God. Hal, I would have gladly forgiven you of these deeds. I died to give you that chance. If you had come to me with a broken and contrite heart, I would have erased these deeds from all memory. But Lord... But you never knew me. And these deeds are merely evidence of what was in your heart all along. I am so sorry. I gave you many chances to repent in life. But out of your pride, you refused. You prayed a prayer decades ago. But it meant little. What? Uh... You never followed me. You never knew me. But Lord, I, I did many good things in your church. Why do you call me Lord? And yet you failed to do what I told you. Hell, you have never been mine. No. Now you must go away, for your deeds are evil. No. Find him hand and foot. No. Take him away. Cast him into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. No! No! No, please! No! 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 Hal! Hal, I... I can't believe this! A man who spent his entire life in church... Why? Even now, your friend curses at God, curses at you. That has been your friend's true nature all along. It is now revealed. What was that? Time moving. We are in the fullness of time and are moving about its corridors. This is the same sensation the Apostle John experienced when moving through the events in the Book of Revelation. When you are no longer confined to time, you see things you wouldn't have seen otherwise. Carry notes. After what happened to Hal, I was relieved to hear Carrie's name called. Tom, After what all, do you mean you're cutting the transmission? I mean Pastor Allen is getting low on oxygen. He's obviously delusional, and I'm not going to be responsible This is no delusion. This happens to be the most important message ever delivered at this church. Did you hear what he was saying? Hal Newman going to hell? Knowing what I know, never mind that. If you dare to cut that feed as much as I'd hate to lose you right now, I will have you thrown out of this building. You got it? I watched Carrie step forward. And I thought back to images of her holding a crying baby at church, or taking a, a little toddler by the hand. Carrie was an amazing woman. Gabriel, reveal the works of her life. 
Yes, my lord. Did you hear about Pastor Alan? He took up with that trashy little worship singer. Everybody knows they spent the night together in some love nest in Cairo. You can't tell anyone. It could ruin a marriage. You know, I'm not here to gossip. But if you're thinking of making that woman head of preschool, there are some things you should know. I'm just sharing these things out of concern. After all, she is part of the church ministry, so she really needs our prayers. I had no idea. She was the source of all those nasty rumors. Terry warned me about her. Something she felt. Terry knows it is time to account for your stewardship. Yes, my lord. My lord, please. Those statements, they were taken out of context. The children, they were my joy, my greatest concern. I gladly served you. Carrie, really... did you not hear my word when I said, not all who sound religious are godly people. They may refer to me as Lord, but their heart is far from me, for they are unwilling to obey my father. Un unwilling to? Now, now hold on here. Gabriel, oh. is the name Carrie Knowles found in the Book of Life? Oh. No. What? It is not, my lord. What? Lord, I have been nothing but a servant! For as long as I can remember! And you already received your full reward for that service, Carrie. That's it? That's all the thanks I get? Carrie, my word is clear about the seven things I hate. And the seventh, which is an abomination, is sowing discord among brethren. Again, I state in my word that I cannot tolerate those who slander their neighbors. Didn't I pray? Didn't I ask forgiveness of my sins? You did. Yeah. But Carrie, your heart was far from me. You stated you knew Jesus. But you never came to me with a humble and contrite heart for salvation. It's not true. Therefore, my life was never imparted to you. But I prayed! I, you I did- trusted in your works as a substitute for a genuine relationship with me. My word is clear on that, Carrie. You are not justified by works. If you had sincerely given your life to me, your life would have shown a changed nature. You would have loved what I loved, hated, what I hated. That is the evidence. It isn't the works, Carrie. It's the heart. You do not know me, Carrie. And I do not know you. My word is clear. You have made your choice. Therefore, you must depart from me and go to your eternal punishment. Now, you... you just wait here. You I... must go to the place reserved for those who reject me. For many are called, but few are chosen. Get these off me! I said, get these chains off me! Away. Come before my throne. It is time for you to give an accounting. But God is love. God is love, Lydia. And out of his love for those who accept him, he has prepared this place. A place of purity and perfection. Because of his love for us, he will not tolerate anything impure here. Those who reject him will have their fill of the way they have chosen for all eternity. And you said this story will somehow relate back to me. I still don't see the connection. Don't worry. By the time the story ends, it'll all connect for you.
Alan Rockaway, it is your time to give an account of your stewardship. Thank you, my lord. I, I don't suppose it counts for much, but as you know, I was a pastor for most of my life. Almost 30 years. I led many people to accept you as their savior. Yes, but did you? Did I what, sir? Accept me as your lord and savior. Well, that goes without saying. No, Alan. It does not go without saying. How did you live your life? Well, I... Lord... Gabriel, is Alan Rockaway prepared to enter my kingdom? No, my lord. He is not. But... But, Lord, I served you. I healed people in your name. I, I baptized, I prayed, I taught your word. I devoted my life to your cause. Here are your deeds, Alan. Gabriel? You justified your divorce of Terry before your elder board. Look, like any other man, I have needs. And Jesus understands that. And before your church. Forget the angry, vengeful God of your childhood, of your negative and false impressions. I'm preaching grace. Just look out these windows and ask yourself, does the one who created the Rocky Mountains want his highest, most beloved creation to live in a dark box of do's and don'ts? Oh Lord, we thank you for the sweet, slow journey you led Alan and Jenny on to find each other this special day. You did all these things in my name, Alan, and yet I knew you not. My life was not within you. I could have and would have forgiven all these things, but you never had a repentant heart. Instead, you preached what would make you popular and successful. Empty words that allowed people to live comfortably, but without fruit. You neglected to teach your people what it truly means to follow me. To love me with all their heart, soul and might. You even paraded your adultery and the destruction of your family before the church, justifying it in my name. This was an abomination. Lord, had my life been within you, you would not have gone so boldly into adultery against my word. When I was on earth, my words were clear. Whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. But... Alan, my word also says there is evidence for those who truly know me. If they know me, they will keep my commandments. If they break my commandments, they will confess their sins and repent. You never confessed or repented from your sin. Rather, you justified it. But, Lord, King David committed adultery and you forgave him. David sincerely repented. And that is why he rests in his reward today. But you did not. You continue to twist my word to justify yourself. And worse yet, you preached it to the sheep I had entrusted to you. B but I too was deceived. I, I was led astray. I simply preached what I knew. And I didn't realize. I gave you Terry. Uh, I don't understand, Lord. I've listened to your sermons for years now, and, and I'm curious. Hmm. I, I don't think I've ever heard you use the word sin, even once in the last several years, or righteousness, or justice. And? Well, you talk about how Summit Chapel is a safe place to check out the faith, to kick the tires, right? Right. But how does someone receive Jesus at our church? Terry, we've talked about this a hundred times. The whole approach is to reach out to the seekers. We don't want to pound them over the head with doctrine. It's a gentle leading. Yes, but, but how do these seekers find anything? There aren't any calls for repentance or... Terry, look, 
I'm not gonna debate you on this. The problem is you're still tied to the past, the old way of doing things, to dogma. No, but, but it's basic truth. Bottom line, you don't get what my ministry is about, and frankly, you don't care. No, I am asking basic questions, and you're the one refusing to answer. Who's the one who doesn't care? Alan, you knew. You were told, and you were warned. Lord, did you not read in my word that those who are teachers in the church will be judged by me with greater strictness? Yes, Lord, I did. But I believed I had been called to this work. You were called. And it would have turned out differently if you'd only surrendered your life and ministry to me. But... But now you must depart from me. For my presence is not within you. And your name is not found in the book. Oh, God! Bind him hand and foot. Lord. And cast him into deepest darkness. Deepest darkness? My Lord! When I was on earth, I said whoever causes one of these little ones to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. I didn't know. For such persons, I said, I would reserve a place of greatest torment. God. The place of deepest darkness. Take him away. God! God! Please! No, God, no! No! Oh, oh God! Please! Please, Lord God, no! No! God, no! God! 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 God, you're fading! Please, no! Your presence is drifting away! This is the last time I'll ever see him! Ever know him! Why did I weigh such cheap, shallow teaching? Why was I so proud? It was a simple truth! Why didn't I listen to his voice? My own pride! Why did I turn away from him? I missed it! Why did I reject his truth? A fool! Why did I reject his love? A wretched, despicable fool! Why did I reject him? Why? No! Uh, the angel! Oh, please! Alan, please! Take my hand! Oh, please, thank you! Thank you! <laughs> Come with me, Alan. What? How? What you have been through is real. If you lost your earthly life at this moment in time, this would have been your eternal destiny. What do you mean, if I lost my earthly life? The Father allowed you to see what would have happened if your son was not, at this very moment, rescuing you from death. Jeff! Because of your son's persistence and obedience to the urging of the Spirit, you are about to be spared. You see, Alan, the Father is going to allow you to deliver a message to the world. He is granting you a second chance. <laughs>